that Lance Armstrong has been a cheat, that Pope Francis is a troll who cheated Eganito Bernal by auctioning the bike that the Colombian gave him so lovingly, and that Patrick Lefebvre is a sexist, well, these are the three great truths of the cycling world. However, lately, the UCI of the Felon David La Pation has been very much in favour of the woke culture of macho cancellation, and they have sanctioned with more than 20,000 euros the old alcoholic of the Sudal Quickstep team, and this just after banning the specialised time trial helmets with the aero sock that two years previously had been approved. And that for Remco Avenapool is, to say the least, a fucking shame. Especially when the ridiculous Aero Head 2 helmets of Richard Plurger and the Danish dictator Vingegaard are allowed. This persecution of the elder Patrick is not casual, and simply with facts we will show you how the cancellation to Lefebvre is a shameful persecution against a guy who was allowed excesses of every kind. And we're not talking about the triplets in Paris-Roubaix or that Alaphilippe was very close to winning the Tour de France. Beyond comments, Lefebvre's macho attitudes have always been present in his teams. He allowed wife-beaters like Mario Cipollini to leave the team in the middle of a Tour de France stage just to have dinner with a Spanish stewardess, and so he could show off his perfect naked body full of Epo in a dingy hotel room. He allowed guys who cheated on their wives with prostitutes and doped up on still knocks until dawn, like Frankie Vandenbroek, to not only have ups and downs in their performance, he also gave them second chances. And he currently welcomes on his team the guy who married a daughter from a dysfunctional family. He publicly defended a man who, at the peak of his career, was doping cocaine and sleeping with a 16-year-old girl and who, thanks to his advice, went from doping in Armstrong's Epoca to winning cleanly several monuments to Classica Man Luigi. He even commented that the mediocre cyclist, Sam Bennett, returned to the Bora team as a battered woman returned home to her aggressor. He claimed that as long as he lived, he would never have a women's team in his structure, because after all, it was not considered as a charitable organisation. He was treating female riders as if they were human waste, as if they were believers who devoutly believe in clean cycling today. He expressed himself, saying that he did not understand how there was a quality of minimum salary in the men's world tour with the women's world team, without taking into account that the minimum salary of women in the top category is 10,000 euros lower, and that in the pro-continental category there were characters like Peter Sagan swindling several million euros a year, and in the second women's divisions they barely earn more than this humble and sad channel. Yes. A channel that you can help with a super thanks to get us out of poverty. And maybe we'll be able to put a bid on Eganito's Catholic bicycle. Not for all these base macho behaviour, well, nothing ever happened to Patrick Lefebvre. And moreover, he was always well treated by the UCI and its acolytes. So what has changed now to make him the number one enemy of the woke culture of cancellation? Possibly Lefebvre's biggest mistake in his 30-plus years as a director, a director who saw Johan Museo win the most important one-day races on the planet whilst totally doped, a director who has won stages in the Tour de France with riders as bizarre as the criminal Juan Miguel Mercado, or the doped to the gills Richard Vironc, or the half-dead British Bahrain Merida rider who he revived to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eddie Merckx's record. A major mistake, and one that at first glance looked like a simple touch of attention to his fetish cyclist, Julien Alaphilippe. But then he brought Lulu's wife into the criticism of his cyclist, where, if you remember, he called him a drunkard, mainly because of the bad influences of the influencer, model, commentator and businesswoman, Marion Rousse. The double world champion has responded on the road in his final year with the Soudal team, with a great ninth place at Milan San Remo, where he arrived with the group of favourites in the fastest classicissima of all time and with the most beastly Poggio climb ever, 
a great result that will no doubt be joined by others during the campaign where he tries to dock in 2025 to Total Energy, as Sagan did in his last two years without the protection of Adelas and with a fading spirit. However, Marion Rousse did not take it at all well, not at all. First, she responded instantly on Twitter to the comment calling her an alcoholic, claiming she had never tasted alcohol, even though there is irrefutable evidence on the internet that our blonde friend did hit the bottle in the past. And then secondly, cancelling Lefebvre forever in cycling, a process that has just begun and that, sooner or later, will have its final culmination. Not even two weeks have passed since Lefebvre's statements in Humo magazine, and the UCI Ethics Commission, the same one that's in charge of sanctioning and collecting money from federations as powerful as the Afghani or the Ukrainian ones, and of verifying that clean cycling has returned with these current Martians who every day break records from the epoca, well, they have sanctioned Lefebvre with more than 20,000 euros for his statements towards Marion Rousse. Not for his words bad-mouthing Alaphilippe or Bennett or the Monkey of Man or any of those macho acts that he's committed in the past. Simply for mentioning Marion Rousse in passing as a bad influence on her partner's alcoholic work life. And to give you an idea, a little bit of scale, this fine is four times the fine that the Slovak Federation received at the same time for excluding a cyclist from the Tour of Slovakia simply because they felt like it. Attacking cyclists and putting them out of work is four times less punishable than suggesting that a woman might be a bad influence on the father of her offspring. This is the woke culture in which we live. And this is the UCI which overly defends its acolytes, including, of course, Marion Rousse. Now the deep throat of French public television has demanded that Lefebvre publicly humble himself by apologizing personally to her, since the old alcoholic has already apologized to Alaphilippe. But now they need to see the old man on his knees, begging for mercy towards the director of the Tour de France for women. And only then will the 20,000 Swiss francs that have been imposed as a fine on the Belgian moron be forgiven. It is well known that Marion Rousse has been gaining power in the world of cycling. That a clean cyclist and a beautiful woman and an amusing communicator with an impeccable image, well, she's the perfect lure to attract sponsors and money to the world of women's cycling. One of the main ways for the Felon David Le Patillon to earn rich, rich money and to take advantage of the needs of the most marginalized sectors of society to enrich himself as a pseudo-socialist politician. Rousse is already the strongest woman within the Omeri Sports universe. And this cancellation towards Lefebvre for some ridiculous words, and not for the huge amounts of doping offenses committed by members of his team on French soil over the years, well, it's the main proof of that. Patrick, you had better be quiet for the next few months, or you will end up like Lance, being insulted and spat upon by those who revered you for decades.